Hey guys, welcome to this video, which is gonna be slightly different to my normal type of content, but I'm hoping it will be helpful and interesting, inspiring maybe to any of you that are also going through the same thing. So I have had problems with my stomach for as long as I can remember. I have really bad bloating, kind of permanently, like I can't remember a day where I wasn't bloated and uncomfortable and in pain. And on top of that, I have problems, I, yeah, just with my stomach. Um, I mentioned on Instagram stories the other day how I went for an, an entire month without going to the toilet. Like, I went for an entire month without shitting back in November 2016. I have a picture of what my stomach looked. I think this was like two, three weeks into that month. And as you can see, it looked really painful and it was. I had a colonoscopy after that month, a couple of months later, because obviously that's really disturbing and something was obviously not right. So I had a colonoscopy, which I vlogged the entire thing of like including bowel prep to the surgery, which I will leave a link to. You can go and watch it here in the description box. And nothing really came of that. Like they took six biopsies but they couldn't find anything wrong and so ever since then the past four years I've been kind of just getting on with it and ignoring it and being like yeah I'm bloated but there's nothing I can do about it but there is FODMAP I have been meaning to try this for a really long time and it's got to a point now where it's COVID, we're in 2021, um, restaurants are shut, we're in another lockdown and now is the best time I think to really just do this to find out once and for all what my um, stomach and body doesn't like and reacts to. So I'm also going to be doing this with my mum, she's got a dietitian and a doctor kind of like watching over her. I haven't been organised enough to all, like do that for myself but I thought doing it with her together, both of us in this together would be really helpful. I'm going to be starting it on Monday and this vlog is going to be an overview I might have to split this into a couple of vlogs. Yeah, I guess just going to be documenting maybe in this vlog just the elimination kind of stage of it. So cutting out all those foods in high FODMAP. I'm really nervous about this. Like I love food. I love all food apart from cucumber. <laughs> I'll eat anything. And so I'm going, to, I'm going to be cutting out a lot of my faves, which I'm really upset and kind of nervous about. And yeah, like chocolate, fizzy drinks, bread in general. A lot of my favourite vegetables are really high in FODMAP. I use garlic for everything and onion for everything. So yeah, I think I'm going to struggle. But this will hopefully be like a video diary vlog of the elimination process. And then I will be sharing some recipes. I'm going to be filming some what I eat in a day on the low FODMAP diet. So subscribe if you want to see those. I'm going to make a FODMAP playlist. And then I guess I'll do a separate video with the um, reintroduction stage of it if we get that far, which hopefully we will. Like I'm very, I've got very strong willpower. Once I put my mind to something, I'm quite good at sticking to it, but I know that I'm also due on my period next week. So yeah, this is going to be di a difficult, difficult I think. Oh, I have a kitten at the door meowing to come in. All you eat is tuna. <laughs> you love tuna. My tuna boy. Mm -mm. I wonder if I can still eat tuna. I think so. So I've done so much research. I've planned loads of meals and recipes and I've tried to get to grips with like what to look out for recipe labels but I've also downloaded some apps which I think are going to be super helpful but the reason I'm starting this vlog today is because um, I'm going to go and do my first low food map food shop. Not really, oh my god, <laughs> Maurice, <laughs> oh my god, Maurice. This isn't my first like proper food shop, this is just to go and get some of the basics that I know that I'm going to need in my food cupboard because our local shop is quite small and I know it's not going to have much kind of variation for people with food intolerances. So I'm going to go to a local Tesco which is a bit more of a drive but should have better stuff in stock for gluten intolerance, lactose intolerance, stuff like that. A couple of things on my list that I definitely want to get is garlic oil oil because apparently that's low in food maps and still adds a bit of garlic flavor to your meals i'm gonna get some more sesame oil rice cakes gluten-free bread gluten-free oats an asso fetida powder gluten-free soy sauce just like cupboard basics that i'm gonna need for the next i don't know 
two months. I ordered two things on Amazon and they came yesterday and I'm really excited about both of them. First, I got some kitchen scales. I'm really excited about this. It has all the different weighing units and it's sleek and sexy looking. And I need this because there are some foods which in like specific portions are low in FODMAPs, but any higher are high in FODMAPs. So like just to make sure that I'm being sensible about it, I got that. We were trying to weigh the kitten on this last night he would not stay still on it and i also got this book which i was recommended loads on instagram the complete low fodmap diet i'll leave all links down below this has loads of really delicious recipes in look at that beef meatballs with mashed potatoes up for that yeah loads of great recipes that i'm really excited about trying and also loads of um like meal plans is so necessary and loads of info about fodmap what are you doing? What is he doing? He's trying to attack me. Yeah, I just thought that the only way I'm really going to be able to do this is, is if I have a meal plan because otherwise I get really hangry and I know that I'll just like get annoyed that I don't know what to eat. So if I know what I'm eating all the time, hopefully nothing will go wrong. Okay, I'm in the supermarket and it's about triple, quadruple the size of my normal one. So I'm a bit confused at where to stop. I'm gonna look if I can get any like, yeah, gluten-free sausages. Like, I've never had to look at food labels before. I've been so spoiled and privileged in the past. This is uh, quite overwhelming. But they have a huge a range of kind of like lactose-free vegan yogurt and cheese and stuff here. And I'm very happy to see that these um, Oatly ones are fine. So I've got a Greek yogurt one and also a blueberry one, which sounds Amazing, very excited about that. Although I would like some cream, lacto-free cream, and I can't see to find that for like creamy pastas. This one isn't, isn't doable. Okay, I'm in the gluten-free aisle, wheat-free aisle, free from, and I'm realizing how difficult this is gonna be because even stuff that says it's gluten-free, I've been using this app and you scan the barcodes and it tells you if it is, and nothing, nothing is right for me. I don't know what this has got in it that isn't all right for me. Oh, caramelized sugar, beet fiber, that's that's probably it. This is, this is really hard. Home now, and I'm gonna show you what I managed to pick up. As I said, these are really just cupboardy bits. Just wanted to go and see what was kind of out there in a big superstore. And I honestly am a little bit disappointed, like even the, free from aisle, all the gluten free stuff, and hardly any of it I could eat. So I used the King's College app, FODMAP app, which allows you to scan, but own brand stuff wasn't like in the system. So there were loads of like Tesco own brand, which might have been fine, but I couldn't really tell. But looking at the ingredients, everything I thought would be fine isn't fine. I literally picked up everything that I could, I could eat because I don't know when I'm gonna get another chance to kind of get stuff like this and I thought it'd be interesting to try it. So this brand called Shah, gluten-free brand, they actually had loads of stuff that is fine for FODMAP. It's um, lactose-free, high in fiber, gluten-free. So I got some ciabatta rolls, white loaf bread. The packaging for gluten-free stuff is so weird. Like, why is it in the bag like this? They also had crisp bread, which looks interesting. And, and probably have that with a little bit of cheese and ham. Free from giant chocolate buttons. Again, I'm not sure whether I can eat these, but I got them anyway. Tins of mackerel, because I'm definitely allowed that. And I freaking love mackerel and some pads, which are not for here. Lacto-free spreadable kind of butter thing. I am allowed butter, but I thought I would get this just to give it a try. And the Oatly that I was really excited about, the yogurts. But I need to quickly put this in the freezer because it's warm now, but gluten-free potato waffles. I am so excited about these. I think I'm gonna be living off these. I got some measuring spoons. How cool are these? Lovely, they're very nice. They're so cute. I feel like that'll make cooking so much easier. Free from whole grain rice crack crackers. I don't know if I can have normal rice crackers. I thought I could. I don't know, I got them anyway. Gluten-free oats. Again, I think you can have normal oats, but I got those just in case. Olive oil with garlic in. Olive oil with chilli in. I think they're fine. I've got a normal olive oil and another garlic one. I was super excited to see that these nans, nans, biscuits, oats and ginger stem are fine on FODMAP. And they've got a source of fibre, so I'm really excited to try those. Tomato paste. 
I got this whole earth crunchy peanut butter. This flavouring, which I'm really excited about because apparently it's made from fennel, but it tastes like garlic. So this will be perfect for adding a bit of garlicky flavour without actually having garlic itself. Dark chocolate for a sweet snack. Ground ginger. I got these, which I was really excited to find. Lacto-free cream, so I can have creamy pastas. Pretzels. Excited for these. Like, as I said, all of this stuff, apart from the own brand stuff, is verified by that app, which is peace of mind. And I got brown and a basmati rice. Both of these are gluten-free. Also got nutritional yeast. My old housemate and best friend swears by this. Apparently, it's gorgeous, so gonna try that and yeah that's pretty much it it is saturday two days before i start the fodmap elimination process and i thought i'd show you my stomach because today's particularly bad um yeah this is my stomach this is actually my stomach pretty much most of the time i would say just very bloated, very painful. I can't imagine what like I would look like or feel like if I didn't have this little food baby bloat going on 24-7. Yeah, like it, it's really painful to even breathe in. Um, and from the front, <laughs> I look pregnant. That's so bad. But I've taken some pictures of this and I think it'll be really interesting at the end of the whole process to show you before and after like if this changes at all, which I hope it does. Hello everyone, so started my low FODMAP yesterday. I didn't vlog because I wasn't feeling very well. I had the worst period pains ever. So yeah, starting this on a week that I've also got my period and I'm feeling a little bit run down is <laughs> not ideal. But I did film some quick clips of what I ate on my first day low FODMAP. I had the world's most d disgusting porridge for lunch. <laughs> I normally have porridge with milk and this time I made it with water. Also it's gluten-free oats I made it with so it was pretty rank. I squirted so much maple syrup on it and added bananas and peanut butter. Want like three quarters of a banana and it was still disgusting but I ate it because I was ravenous. <laughs> For snacks, I had an orange, a kiwi with the skin on, which made my mouth burn and itch so bad. I think I'm allergic to kiwis. For dinner, I made this awesome salmon. I found a really nice recipe for Dijon mustard, maple syrup and ginger salmon. And I had that with carrots, a little bit of courgette and some spinach with nutritional yeast. And I made some basmati rice with that as well. So day two, I'm feeling a little bit more positive about my food choices after last night's dinner, which was so delicious. So for lunch, I am making some eggs on toast. I am having this char wholesome white loaf baked with sourdough, millet and quinoa. The slices are tiny, like the size of my hand, so I'm going to have three small slices and I'm just going to have that with two boiled eggs. Yum. <laughs> I'm not having very good luck on this FODMAP lunch thing. This is the easiest thing to make and look, my, my eggs have got tuna. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Ew. Very happy to find out though that I can have ketchup. This is my lunch. I have no idea. I've never fucked up eggs so bad. I don't know what happened there. But um, yeah, I'm interested to try this. So I am super excited because for dinner we have a kind of like ready meal thing, which I just didn't think I'd be able to have on this FODMAP thing. Sainsbury's do slow cooked British gammon shanks with maple, black pepper and orange sauce. And this is apparently low FODMAP, so we're going to have it with some potatoes, which I'm parboiling, and then going to roast with olive oil, some paprika I think is okay, and then this asafoetida. So yeah, I'm excited about these potatoes. And for veg, G's having peas. G's having peas, and I'm having green beans, but we're going to boil them together. I hope, I hope that's alright. Day five of being low FODMAP, OMG. I've made it five days, that's nearly a week. I'm so proud of, oh my God. Um, I'm so proud of myself. The reason I haven't vlogged in a couple of days is because I had the worst migraine headache yesterday and the day before that and the day before that I also had headaches. 
I don't know whether it's just like um, that time of the month or whether it's actually like sugar or gluten withdrawals. I have no idea, but it was so bad. But apart from that, like I'm feeling a lot better today. I haven't got a migraine. I've still got a little bit of a headache, but I'm going to try and take it easy. I'd be interested to know if anyone else has had that those symptoms whilst starting FODMAP. Apart from that, it's been going pretty well. Like we've had some really, really nice dinners, which I am definitely gonna show you my faves of when I film a what I eat in a day or a week or like my favorite low FODMAP dinner recipes. We've had some really delicious dinners. Like all of them have been really nice. One thing I have noticed though, is that I am so hungry all the time. Like I'll eat a big dinner and then I'll still be hungry. And I don't know if, whether that's because I'm not eating as much. Like my portion sizes are smaller so it'll just take a while to get used to that or if it's because i'm not getting like yeah gluten but i just wanted to show you my stomach because my bloating's going down which is nice like i'm definitely still a little bit bloated but it's not as bad as it was don't know if you can see that but yeah that's pretty good like yeah definitely still a little bit but it's only day five you know so i'm quite happy ignore all the mess like i need to tidy up after my migraine yesterday <laughs> Also, I placed an order on a website called FOD Market last week and the stuff came yesterday and I've put it all, like all of my edible stuff in this box. So I've got some like what they're called meal sauces, which I'm really excited about trying. Red Thai curry, teriyaki sauce, Thai masaman. So yeah, I've got some nice things to eat in the coming weeks. Chip so shop curry sauce. You wanna see what's going on? Um, but right now I'm gonna have a snack. I'm gonna have one of these biscuits, which are very nice. Biscuit breaks with oats and stem ginger. You okay? Biscuit. You love it. For dinner last night, we made like a chicken tray bake. Haven't you said that? This is for a different video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm filming two different videos today. And we've just heated the leftovers up for lunch. So I'm having it. It's just chicken, potato, pepper, red pepper, carrot. That's it. Oh, we did have courgette. What is he doing? Um, and G's having it in a sandwich. Which Don't looks, judge me. She looks nice. I haven't been craving bread that much, you know. I've been craving it as like a snack, a bit of toast. Does, but does carrot in the sandwich work? I'm yeah. not sure it does. Yeah. I'm a pioneer. You're putting potatoes in a sandwich. <laughs> Oh, hang on. How good this looks. Oh, a little courgette, thanks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have some really nice meals planned for the week. And also, I was so excited that I found some um, snacks that I can have. I can have these Belgian dark chocolate rice cakes. I found these oat biscuits. I got these cacao nibs for baking with, and also you can add them to smoothies or cereal. I found these ones that I can have, ginger crunch cookies. And then I'm super excited because I found some gluten-free bread that I can have. A lot of gluten-free bread I can't have because it has like lactose in it, but this one doesn't. And also rice krispies for baking and cereal and gluten-free cocoa pops, which again, I'm super excited about because I didn't have any cereal last week, which I missed. I also got some free from gluten and milk um, flour for baking, fruit and veg. I can't have apples. Hey guys, so it has been two weeks today since I started FODMAP, whoa. And I don't think I've slipped off bandwagon yet. I don't think I've fucked anything up massively, which is nice. But we're just cooking dinner. We're making a prawn, prawn rice noodle dish. And we're also gonna prep tomorrow's dinner as well. We need to marinate some cod. I'm like balancing you on a candle and a can of yeast flakes. So we've got carrots and um, the tips of a spring onion, some ginger, pak choy, and I'm frying some red pepper. Do this with prawns and a dressing. And we're gonna uh, marinate some cod for tomorrow night as well. How good does this look? Oh my God. And then we've got our prawns to add in. I am so excited for this. That was very easy. And it looks really impressive. So we're gonna eat this now. Mmm. Not pad thai. Very nice. 
Mmm. I can't choose that, can you? Why not? Hi, good. Sauce mix is good, isn't it? Yeah, it's very nice. You have to send that to my folks, that recipe. <laughs> We're sending them all the FODMAP ones. <laughs> Yummy. And super healthy. These rice noodles are really good. Mm. Just prepping tomorrow's dinner. I've decided I might actually film it what I eat in a day tomorrow. So stay tuned because that will probably be up by the time this goes up. Um, if you, But if you wanted to see kind of what I'm eating for breakfast, lunch and dinner, check that out. Um, here is my marinade i've got what have i got toasted sesame oil mirin and um brown sugar has made up a, like a marinade and a glaze so i'm saving some of the glaze for dinner tomorrow and i'm marinating my cod now hey guys so future katie just popping in here to say that i had the worst reaction after eating that meal and i've since worked out that i have an intolerance to soy of which there was quite a bit in that dish even though i had bought like gluten-free soy sauce yeah i've got a bit of in, an intolerance to it after i did a blood test which i will leave the vlog to up above and down below so yeah that that was what caused that so i'll insert some pictures here of my stomach after i had that meal it like was so uncomfortable <coughs> Always. <laughs> it was my first experience of being really in a lot of pain and bloating um, since starting FODMAP. Whoa. So yeah, it was, it was interesting to see how my body reacted to something that definitely it, it, it didn't agree with. So I'm nearly near the end of week four of being low FODMAP. I haven't um, updated you guys in a while, but I thought I would tonight because I'm hoping that next week I'm going to start the reintroduction phase. But I'll talk to you about that a little bit more later. I'm kind of risking it with dinner tonight. I show, I'll show you why. So I was so excited to find this in the supermarket. It's a char gluten-free, lactose-free pizza margarita. I heard people talking about this in one of the low FODMAP Facebook groups. But on further like inspection, I found that it has carob apple in, and that is an ingredient that isn't tested on the Monash FODMAP app. I'm going to add some toppings onto this because right now it's very plain. <laughs> I'm going to add olives, a little bit of parma ham because it was the only ham I could find that didn't have like ridiculous items in it that you would just wouldn't expect to have in ham. And what was the other thing? I'm going to put a little bit of spinach on top too. Um, but I've also now got a Zoom call with my girlmates to catch up. But um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. I'll show you my bloating now and then I'll show you my stomach after to see if it has made a difference. I don't think I am intolerant to apples. And it's also such, oh God, such a small amount of apple in there. I imagine that it won't make a difference, but who knows really. Um, I am looking so glam. <laughs> um i'm just not i'm not wearing any pants so i'm still quite bloated but i actually just think that's my stomach now like i, I just think that that's what i look like these days so yeah a little bit of a bloat i don't know what i could have eaten to give me a bloat i just yeah i just think that's my stomach although it does feel hard but it's so much better than it was when i first started this so yeah that this is my stomach now i'm kind of getting a little bit disheartened with the fact that if this is bloating it hasn't gone down yet and i guess that's why i'm being impatient and i want to go on to the reintroduction asap because i just um yeah just it's really intense it's really hard this there's still a lot of stuff i can eat but just having restrictions on so many things it makes does make it really difficult and hard to enjoy food i'm really excited because i placed another order from fod market a couple of days ago it's like a fod map online food store and i've placed uh that was my second order on there and in this one, I placed an order for some barbecue sauce because it was something I was definitely missing in my life. I was going to make my own, but then I saw this and I thought, well, why not? Yeah, I mean, my spinach looks a bit burnt, but it looks... My spinach looks rank. Um, I'm not I'm not going to eat all of this. I'm going to save half of it for lunch tomorrow. Look at your one, it's huge! G's got a normal one from the supermarket um i'm really excited about this that is super cute i hope i don't get an allergy to it i think haven't bloated too much after that but a tiny bit i think that maybe is i have no idea actually no idea what that's from but i don't feel too bad which is good
Hey guys, so I thought I would end this vlog with a quick roundup of how I found the elimination stage of being low FODMAP. So I did the elimination stage for about five, six weeks. Um, I'm now in the middle of reintroduction of which I am trying to vlog, but it's being quite difficult to vlog the reintroduction part, but it will be coming soon. Stay tuned and subscribe if you wanna see how I've been getting on with that. Yeah, being low FODMAP wasn't actually as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Obviously there were times where I felt really down about it and just wanted to eat normally and not have to think about what I was eating. In all, it's been a positive experience and I've actually found loads of meals that I really, really enjoyed. Yeah, we found some really cool recipes which I would definitely continue making and eating even after this whole kind of experimentative process has ended for me. All in all, being low FODMAP wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. And the things that I'd miss the most definitely was onion and also just gluten in general, the frictons in gluten, which I can't eat. Um, it's just in everything. So that's been quite difficult, but I found some awesome snacks and like little easy meals uh, from some UK supermarkets. So alongside this video, I'm gonna be writing up a blog post on how the elimination stage has gone for me and also writing up a blog post full of some low FODMAP treats and foods that I have found and kind of like mini reviews and those kind of posts really really helped me when I was um, planning this whole low FODMAP process so I think that would be really helpful to those of you who are about to embark on this journey. Yeah I'm halfway through reintroduction and it's so difficult to keep it on track of. It's taking a lot longer than I was hoping. I thought I'd be done by March and it's mid-March. I've still not finished testing everything yet but yeah it's been really interesting. I hope this vlog has um, been interesting for you guys. Do let me know if you've tried low FODMAP. I already, during reintroductions, I've found some things that I am intolerant to. So if you do want to hear about what was actually causing some of my issues, then be sure to watch that. But yeah, there, there's not much else I can say. Just let me know if you've got any questions about the elimination process in the comments and I will try my best to answer them. But yeah, I love you guys lots.